Hello and welcome back to BAM 10 Insight. In this video, we're going to share 10 practices to help you improve many areas of your doubles game. We do these every week in our training as professional players, but the great thing about these practices is that they can be done at any level, right from beginners to advanced players. And make sure to listen out for our top tips on each practice as we go. The first practice is smash and lay off. As you can see, the worker smashes and lays off in a straight line and then moves to the other side and smashes cross and lays off cross. And like with all of these exercises, you can do them with one feeder or two feeders if there's three of you that want to improve. If you have two feeders, you can hit all of your shots straight. This practice can improve your game in so many ways, such as your smash timing, explosive movements, whether that's moving forwards, backwards, or diagonally, and having the ability to lay off with control even when you're moving at maximum speed. And even though we're saying feeder here, there really is no such thing as just feeding. They should always be working on a specific area too. In this practice, it could be their lift accuracy, defense timing, or simply not making any mistakes. The second practice is rear mid, which replicates the situation in doubles where you're in a front and back formation with your partner in front of you. If you're new to rear mid, it can be good to put something in front of you to visualize where your partner would be. We often use a bin, but hopefully your partner isn't that rubbish. <laughs> Sorry, that was trash. Anyway, back to it. Rear mid is great for improving so many different areas, such as your movement, explosive speed, consistency, and also making good shot choices, such as not hitting hard from a bad position. And there are actually a few different ways you can do this practice, which we'll include on screen now for you. It's also important to mention that we'd always advise to try and make these practices fun, especially when you've done them as many times as we have. So you can actually also play a rear mid game where the feeder takes a side and has to hit to the back half of the court, marked out by either some shuttle tubes or cones. The feeder starts with a high serve and then it's game on. So our third practice is mid court drives. Here, the feeder stands in the middle and should move the worker but not too wide as the main focus of this practice is the quality of the drives from being in a good position. This practice is great for improving your quick grip changes, something we need to do a lot of in matches. And it's also great for improving your timing of the drives whilst maintaining a short, crisp hitting action. These are all things the feeder can focus on too. A top tip is to make sure you're still moving forwards into the drive and not just sideways. We always want to try and take the shuttle as early as possible. Now we shouldn't always hit it hard, so the fourth practice, and one of my favourites that I do several times a week, is mid-court control. This practice makes you focus on moving fast, but still hitting controlled shots, which is one of the hardest things to do in badminton. If you can master this, you'll look so threatening on court, and you'll be able to control the game, as your opponents won't know what you're doing. A top tip is that even though you're hitting control shots, you can still add some variety, whether that's a soft, loopy block, or a push with a little bit more pace that almost skims the net. The feeder should also add in the occasional lift so that the worker doesn't stand too far forwards. Or you could even put the bin back onto court to stop them doing this. For the fifth practice, we're going to play a box game, something we play literally every day. This is where the front, back and side tram lines are out. We'd recommend playing a game to seven points and try to incorporate the areas you've been working on in the first four practices, such as your consistency, explosive speed and shot timing. And if you have two feeders, then you have to beat two people. Your shot placement is even more important in this situation, as if you hit crazy cross-court smashes, then this will expose big gaps in the court. Practice number six is pushdowns, which will help to improve your shot quality and control from below the height of the net, and also your ability to stay low in your movement without collapsing your upper body. This will help you to remain in control of your shots and also recover better afterwards. Pushdowns is especially great for male mixed doubles players, where the woman is ducking down and the man has to try and keep control of the rally from low down and not just lift. The more you do this practice, the calmer you'll be in a match. Our seventh practice is pressure defence, and this is something we do every day in our warm-up before we start our main training session. To make it as realistic to a match as possible, the worker can block and move forwards at the right time to challenge at the net. The feeder then needs to be prepared to move across, unless there's two feeders, and then the worker moves back into a defensive position. This practice is so good for your reactions, defensive technique, and a top tip is to not just hit it straight to the feeder's racket every time. You don't want to get used to hitting it straight to your opponent's racket, so instead you can occasionally use small turns. This is also a great practice for the feeder as they can practice their quick grip changes at the net, moving into the right positions and having a short hitting action. There are also three advanced variations of this practice, which we'll put on screen now for you. 
This is really hard for beginners and many intermediate players, but if you want to become a better badminton player, you need to be able to do this practice. Our eighth practice is aimed at improving your serve, return and third shot, which is arguably the most important area of doubles. As well as being able to win quick points in the first three shots, there's no point practicing, say, your attack if you're always making a mistake in the first three shots of the rally. So think about where you're serving or returning to and what the likely reply will be from that shot. For example, if you serve to their forehand, their natural swing might mean they play it cross, so you can be ready for this. Or if they don't have a big swing, they might play a net shot. And just because this practice isn't as fast or exciting as the others, you still need to do this with intensity and purpose. Okay, moving on to our ninth practice, and this is one up, one down at the net and we actually have two levels to this practice. If you're a beginner, then the feeder should stand close to the net and aim to take every shot above the height of the net, playing it soft down in front of the service line. The aim of this practice is for the worker to be late and under pressure at the net, but you still have the confidence and control to play tight net shots back to the net rather than lifting. For advanced players, the feeder should be moving a lot more, in and out to replicate the actual movements you'd make in a match. This is a great exercise to improve your racket skills and control at the net. It's one of our favourites we've been doing for so many years. Okay, last but not least, our 10th practice is net reactions. You both stand around the service line and play flat, fast shots to each other while still making continuous adjustments in both your feet and grip. Similar to the defence practice, don't just hit it back to their racket. Maybe occasionally turn the shuttle or play a softer shot in front of them to make them move. Net reactions is actually the exercise we did when breaking the Guinness World Record. Although, as we were going as fast as we could, we didn't change grips at all during this. And if you like practising your speed to help your badminton, you'll also like this class called Triple Your Typing Speed by Ali Abdal on Skillshare, who are kindly sponsoring this video. And you might be sat there thinking, how is this going to help my badminton? But bear with us on this one. Well, quite simply, as Ali says in the class, when you can type fast, you are just immediately more efficient and more productive when you're on a computer. I know that if I had to write an email before going to training, I could send it in about two minutes. Whereas someone like my mum, sorry mum, she'd probably be about 20 minutes late to training because she types like this. <laughs> And using this website Ali suggested in the class, I tested my typing speed. Have a go yourself and let us know your score in the comments below. Yeah, so typing faster is going to help you get your work done faster and therefore you can play more badminton and improve more. It's all about those marginal gains. And to anyone who doesn't know by now, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes on a range of topics from productivity and habit building to photography and video editing. So to watch Ali's class or any others, then click the top link in the description below or use the code Badminton Insight, where the first 1,000 people will get a free one month trial to Skillshare. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So we're going to put a summary graphic on the screen now for you. These are all of the practices plus our recommended durations. And remember to always focus on what you're getting out of these. It's all about purposeful practice. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss out on future videos. And we'll see you on another one very soon.